sounds so quiet. Um, okay, there actually is one more announcement, but uh, I forgot to tell anyone about it. So on the 21st, which is next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, we've uh, been invited to go to a, a youth rally with, if you guys came for the lock-in or for the rally before, uh, at Jerry Kuhn, his church. Um, do you guys remember JK? Okay. Well, he's the youth pastor. He's the youth pastor at Jerry's church now, and they're having a youth rally, and we've been invited to go. It's in Moore. Um, I should have had permission slips for today, but I'll have permission slips on Sunday and on Wednesday for you guys if you're interested in going. I think it's going to be a really fun time. If you guys were here when Jerry came, it was so fun, right? And uh, JK is awesome, and he's doing a really great job, so it's going to be really fun. If you guys remember JK, he's pretty... It's pretty crazy, so it should be a fun time. What? Jerry is, not JK. Okay, well, anyway, we'll talk about it after, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and get started because I don't have a lot of time. How are you guys? Good. While I get my uh, Bible on here. Okay, we're, I'm going to be reading from 2 Timothy Chapter 1, starting at verse 3. I forgot to give these to you guys. Turning into my father. <laughs> he never gives the scriptures. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to start reading, okay? Oh, a little background. Timothy, 2 Timothy, 1st and 2nd Timothy are written by Paul to Timothy. Okay, so this is Paul writing to Timothy. These are letters. It says, Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember, I remember your tears as we parted, and I'll be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois. Fun fact, my grandma's name is Lois. So I'm connected to Timothy. Okay, anyway. And your mother Eunice, my mom's name is not Eunice. Um, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord, and don't be ashamed of me either, even though I am in prison for him. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from the beginning of time, to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. And now he has made all of this plain to us, by the appearing of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way to life and immortality through the good news. And God chose me to be a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of this good news. That is why I am suffering here in prison, but I am not ashamed of it. For I know the one in whom I trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Uh, one more. Hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me, a pattern shaped by faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. Okay. That was a long passage, but I was reading that, and I just, I love the way it, it's written. What does that sound like to you? That letter. It sounds like it was written from someone to a really good friend, right? Sounds like they had a pretty close relationship. Pretty loving relationship, I would say. Um, so I, I really like Timothy. I really like uh, First and Second Timothy, some of my favorite books. My favorite scripture is Second Timothy 1 and 7. Um, and I love the relationship that he has with Paul. So Paul is writing this particular part from prison. And let's be honest, Paul wrote most of his letters from prison. He was in prison a lot. Um, Timothy isn't in prison. He's leading a church. Okay, He's the head of a church. Yet Paul is more concerned with encouraging Timothy than he is with himself. He barely mentions prison, right? 
he says something like, I'm in prison, but don't worry about that. This is for you. You need help. Sometimes we need to be encouraged. I feel like some of us need more encouragement than others. You know, some people are resilient and they'll just do whatever that they think is right and they don't really need that much encouragement. But some of us need encouragement quite often. Either way, we all need encouragement at some point, right? You can go through life without encouragement. That's, you know, but sometimes you, you get down on yourself. Sometimes you're not sure if you're doing the right thing. And you just need someone to say, no, you're fine. You're doing great. Good job, right? Something, something easy like that. Paul was Timothy's mentor. And for him to be saying such kind things, I have to, to think that it must have made Timothy feel really great. Right? If you guys have anyone that you look up to, if they ever say, I miss you, you're doing a great job, um, I want to help you, if they're ever encouraging to you, that feels pretty good. I mean, it feels great when a stranger says good job, but when it's someone that you look up to, that you have a relationship with, that's even better. Um, so, personally, I have a little bit of a problem with allowing people to mentor me, or I would say I have trouble accepting constructive criticism. And that is simply because I think that I should be able to do something perfectly the first time I do it. And spoiler alert, that doesn't happen. Um, it almost never happens. And so, I know it's unrealistic, but it doesn't matter. Every single time I do something, it has to be perfect. And I'm ashamed to admit if it's not perfect, I don't want to do it ever again. But that's a fact. Um, my mom's nodding her head because she knows. Um, but it, it, that's just how I am, and I'm trying to get better at it. It's something I'm, you know, I'm working on. But it doesn't stop me from getting frustrated and wanting to quit when I'm not good at something. It's kind of like... It's my Achilles heel, honestly. It's my fatal flaw. In uh, Greek mythology, they always have like a fatal flaw. That's how they get defeated. This would be my fatal flaw. I give up. I'm not perfect at <laughs> it. Um, but whenever I get constructive criticism, or you know, it's not always constructive criticism. Sometimes it's just criticism. But I get defensive and I get upset. But what happens when you get defensive and you get upset? Put that wall up, right? You put that wall up, you put yourself in the little box, and you say, no one's going to get to me with their comments. I'm not going to worry about it. And to an extent, that's good. You shouldn't take everyone's criticism as truth and law, right? But there's no way to grow when you put yourself in that box, when you put yourself <coughs> behind those walls. There's no way to grow and get better. And that's the only way you're going to get better is to grow in yourself. I don't know if Timothy had this problem, but I do know that a lot of us have this problem. Timothy doesn't, I don't even know if, he, if we hear from Timothy. I think it's all Paul speaking to Timothy. So I don't know if Timothy is just taking this criticism that Paul gives to him sometimes and saying, all right, perfect, I'm excited to change, right? I don't know, but I do know he was a human, so I can imagine that even if Paul was his mentor and he looked up to him, Sometimes he thought he was doing a fine job, right? Sometimes he didn't want to take that comment. Um, I also know that throughout the books of Timothy, there is no shortage of criticism from Paul. If you read Paul's letters, he knows, he knows what he knows, right? He knows what God wants. He's saying, this is what you should do. And when someone's not doing it, he is quick to say, you're not doing that right, or you need to do this instead. Paul spent so much time in prison for Jesus, right? He's not worried about hurting somebody's feelings, yeah. clearly. That's how he got there in the first place. He's not worried about it. But I will say that throughout all the criticism that Paul gave to Timothy, I think in this passage specifically, he gave him so much praise. 
so much encouragement. They had a relationship. They were friends. Encouraging each other builds a relationship strong enough for criticism to stand on. If you trust someone, even if you're like me and you don't, even the people you trust you don't want to hear criticisms from, you'll probably eventually listen to their advice. You'll at least think about it, right? Um, if, if my dad tells me that something needs to change on Wednesdays, or something's not, not quite working, or he'll be like, he's not gentle about it. Um, <laughs> he doesn't, <laughs> that's just how he is. Um, he'll just be like, this is not working. I'll be like, okay, I'm sorry. I thought I was doing a good job. And automatically I'm mad, right? Automatically I, I get angry, I wanna, start crying every single time. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't listen to what he's telling me, okay? Because I know that he has my back. I know that if he's telling me something that maybe I need to change or maybe we need to change, it's only gonna benefit me and it's gonna benefit you and the church as a whole, right? So we can kind of separate those things. I think being able to take criticism comes with your own confidence in what you're doing. So that's probably why I'm not that good at taking it. Because if someone, if I'm doing something and someone says, you're really bad at that, if the second before they said that I thought I was good at it, automatically I'm like, you're right. I'm bad at it. You're right, wow, how, how could I never figure that out? I'm so bad at it. And that just comes from not being comfortable and not being confident in your own abilities. And so we all go through that, I think. We, we all get there eventually. That's the goal, at least. Um, if my dad or mom, my mom's more gentle about it, she'll be like, <laughs> she'll be like, hmm, maybe you should, maybe you should think about, maybe if you did this instead, how would you feel about that? <laughs> and I know that means that I'm not, I, that she doesn't like something to happen. It's the same thing. Automatically, I'm mad. <laughs> I just take it out on them, when really I'm just like defensive about myself, right? We've all been there, I think. Um, I've had people in my life, though, who want the best for me, but their best isn't God's best, right? So I have this group of friends from high school, and they love me, and I love them. And they always want to give me advice about things. I don't tell them a lot of stuff because their advice is not godly advice. <laughs> Okay? And it's not anything like crazy. Usually, you'd be surprised sometimes. Um, usually it's nothing you know, crazy or outrageous, but it's something that I know I shouldn't do or something that I know isn't right. Um, I have friends like Lindsay and Landon who I can tell things to and they'll pray about it and they'll actually give me advice. Right? That's the difference. Both sides of the coin, they love me and they want the best for me, but they're looking to their own knowledge on this side, and on this side they're looking to God's knowledge, right? So what we're missing, I think, in this whole thing, what I'm trying to say, I'm going to wrap it up because it's almost time. Um, I think we're missing those relationships in our church. Maybe not just our church, I think in... The church as a whole because I think a lot of times you know there's that whole thing I hate it where if you say anything to anyone you're judging them yeah. oh my goodness I hate that yeah. right does the Bible not say that we're supposed to check each other yeah. okay now there are ways where you can come at somebody saying I can't believe you would do this right and now maybe that's not the the best way to get them to acknowledge or, or to see something that maybe they've done that's off the path. Um, but if we have those relationships, if we build our relationship like Timothy and Paul, where for every criticism we've already given two compliments, two compliments before criticism, two compliments after, and we, you know, and we go in that way, when we have that relationship, 
we're more likely to actually help each other. Yeah. Timothy and Paul had the kind of relationship where they could trust each other. They could trust that if Paul was telling Timothy something, then Timothy probably needed to check out that part of his life. Now, I'm not saying that Timothy took every single thing Paul said and made it his own and changed things he was doing, but I'm sure he took a lot of it. Because the point of that criticism that comes out of this relationship is to make you think about things more. Because a lot of times we're going through our lives and we've been doing the same thing for a really long time and it's just kind of natural, you know, but maybe it's not the best way to do things. Maybe someone knows a better way, a more efficient way. And if you're like me and someone says, I think we should do it like this, automatically you're like, I am horrible at getting ice. I'm putting it in a bucket and they're putting it in a bag. How, how could I not have thought of this? When really it's, it's a help to you. And when we get to that point where we have those relationships and we've built those relationships on trust, then the criticisms are less critical and more out of a place of love. And that's where we should all start. <clears throat> Timothy and Paul kept their eyes on God. That's, that's the main thing. They only spoke out of love for one another. At least in these letters. They kept their eyes on God, though. They didn't... They weren't just saying, well, if I were you, I would do whatever. They were saying, this is what God wants us to do, so we need to check ourselves before we mess it up. And that's constantly what they were doing. You guys have heard, probably heard of accountability partners or whatever. And we should have that in church, right? Because if you see someone doing something that's maybe not right or something that could be detrimental to their soul, we shouldn't be afraid to say, maybe you should think about this, right? But we are. We're afraid of being told that we're judging them, right? I am. We don't have those, those foundational relationships. We don't. Maybe a couple of us do, but as a church, we don't have those foundational relationships. We don't feel like we can go up to someone and, and trust them with our problems, with our secrets, with the things we're struggling with. And on the other side of that, most of us don't feel like we can go up to someone and try to help them, right? Try to encourage them or try to say, maybe, maybe you should look at this part of your life. I've noticed, I've noticed that you've not been coming to church as much. You know, and that's, it's a fine line because I will say that there are a lot of things, there are a lot of times where you can be coming to someone in the, in the name of constructive criticism and it's really just criticism, right? Because we all have opinions on how people should live their lives. Whether or not it's in the Bible, we have our own opinions, <laughs> right? Um, but when you have that foundational trust and you have that relationship and you're looking to God in all things, it's not like he leaves you out there blind. I'm sure a lot of us in here have felt a pull to talk to someone at some point, right? And isn't it crazy when that happens? You just have the words. You just know what to say. We need to build relationships that have a foundation in God and in love. We have those two things, I think. Of, of course, we're here for God. And I truly believe that we love each other. But I think our problem comes with putting those two things in the foundation of our relationships. Putting those things together. When we do that, though, we'll have relationships that are encouraging and helpful to us in our growth. And this, just to, to wrap it up, because it is past 7.30 and I just keep talking. Um, 
We need those relationships. You can probably get through life okay, not having that accountability or not having that, um, that encouragement or the constructive criticism. But it's a lot better when you have that person you can talk to who you know you can trust and you know that your relationship can stand on some criticisms or that your relationship is stronger than a situation or stronger than a comment, right? And I just want to, to finish this out, I just want to encourage you guys, if you don't have that person, I think we need to start building those relationships. I really do. Because if we have those relationships as a foundation in our church, when new people come into our church, they're going to be met with love and acceptance, right? Because if we practice it in our own relationships, if we, if we practice love for one another, then we're going to be pros at it for people that we don't know. So I want to encourage you guys this week to, to find someone... Think of someone that that you maybe want to have a, have a relationship with, be friends with, and pray for them. Okay? Pray for someone in the church this week. Because that's the only way that we can all be connected without knowing every single person and every single detail about everyone's life. Right? Through prayer... When you're praying for someone, it's hard to not like them. So I want to encourage you guys to do that this week, to think of someone, a few people, the church itself, and pray for it. Pray for them. Because it's going to bring us together, and we need to build those relationships, especially for when we move out there. Because we want people to come and feel loved. No matter who they are, no matter what they believe or what they've done or what they think of us, we want them to come in and know that we love them. And it starts with us. We have to love each other first. Okay? All right. Well, that's all I have for you guys tonight.